Hello there. My name's Crosswind, and today we're going to be taking a look at the anime I'm watching this season in order to convince and delight you with clever wits and interesting premises. Anime come in all shapes, colors, and sizes, and this winter season is no different in that regard. So, take a seat, open your mind, and let's get this thing cracking, shall we? First up is an anime so sexy that even the slightest dialogue can and will be used for an anime IRL post within the next 5 seconds, despite not making any sense because as we all know, Redditors get laid as much as a French horn player. Oh, and speaking of horns, main girl Zero Two's physical features aren't there just to make the other characters scared of her, or to just be a neat design. They are there because it's this woman's constant mental state, licking, teasing, and being so extremely sexually aggressive that the main character is actually bucking nice guy tropes to get back in the saddle with her. Not that I blame them. Darling in the Franks is all about sex, and it goes out of its way to implement more fan service than even Kill La Kill did in its first few episodes. From women literally having bodysuits sprayed onto them and heels forced onto their feet, to the clearly doggy style related imagery in the cockpit, this anime is unapologetic in its sexual metaphors. There's X's on the girls' uniforms and Y's on the guys, and everybody listens to a guy named Papa. So this show is definitely making a case for how genders are supposed to act in a patriarchy and then potentially obliterating that ideology by showing how incredible it is for a guy to be, get this, dominated by a woman so freaky she knows what a kiss is in a society stripped of its sexuality. Is hoping that's where they're going with it at least, because if not then, <laughs> oops, this is going to get very sexist very fast. Making the case for more women traditionally defined by the patriarchy and gaining independence through hard work and understanding, Violet Evergarden shows up on the scene with a woman more competent than any of the male characters she interacts with. A slight commentary on her upbringing as a soldier with a bunch of dudes. Unfortunately, after losing her arms in war and getting some awesome new automel, Saber, I, I mean Violet, doesn't exactly have the tact and subtlety of the women she meets in the profession she's chosen to immerse herself in, and goes writing letters for other people. The animation is beautiful, Violet is impressive in her lack of restraint, and the story, while still in its infancy, interests me enough to keep watching. Though I know some people don't really find it that fun for them. I, however, am a writer, so seeing someone try to understand how to write with all the inflections and implications of language is right up my alley. Your mileage may vary, but it truly is a great show just to look at. It's Kill Annie after all. Plus, Violet bites things, and that's always so very hot. Keeping with the theme of aggressive women, Citrus is here to warm your heart and your loins as these two teenagers hornily rub and bump lips together in all sorts of fascinating ways. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between and all around, Yuri has come to the anime sphere in a meaningful way, and we're all here just waiting for Demo to return for one last hurrah. A moment of silence for our fallen brother. <laughs> Combining themes of found sexuality and for some reason incest because Japan, <laughs> Citrus details the unruly life of Yuzu Haihara, a gyaru shoved into an all-girls school without a dick in sight. Contrary to the personality she puts on, however, what she wants isn't the sausage, but the bun the hot dog goes in if you catch my drift. And this is the key to the message of the show, which, while it seems it may be, unfortunately, rape them till they like it at first, actually shows that, yes, women like women. And it's okay not to want to go after men if you're just not into that. Love is important, and if you're not comfortable guzzling that baby better than darling, you go for that love nectar. Just don't bake it into cookies, please. I mean, unless you're into that, in which case, go for it. The fun doesn't stop there though, and a place further than the universe rampages onto the scene like only a clumsy high school adventure can. Finding meaning in your life when you just follow the rut in the road from people that have come before you is extremely difficult, because it's so very comfortable, and the rest of the world is very, very scary. But if you never take a step off alone, you can just ask someone else for help, to inspire and reach out a hand, to pull you up from that straight and narrow rut to the brilliantly chaotic world around you. Featuring cute girls with questionable haircuts as they attempt to reach Antarctica for various reasons, a place further than the universe is a heartwarming tale that I can't help but smile through the entire way. 
Blending comedy and a heartfelt message, seeing these girls try to reach their goals so hard is and will continue to be a boatload of fun. A week. Overlord brings in another season with just the thing we've wanted in anime, more racial representation. Showcasing the lizard people we've been clamoring and waiting for for so very long and their strangely adorable mating habits. I can only feel proud of how far the industry has come in becoming not only a global phenomenon of inclusion, but a multi-reality one as well. Truly, there are no words for the beauty on display here. Meanwhile, Albedo and the overlord Ainsam himself are busy teaching Kakutis a lesson while some new characters we probably won't see until next season make their first appearances. It's a veritable snorgasbord of dull content when you're not with the lizard people, and I'm glad we finally separated the wheat from the chaff with this season. Long live albino lizard girl and the cutest mate of them all, and wait, wait, wait what, what, she's, she's not eating with her mouth, oh, oh, oh god, oh, oh, oh. If you thought the girls I've talked about are already cool, just wait until you get the slave girls anime is known for being rescued by an overpowered but not trying too hard main character with a penchant for cooking. Show up with Death March something something lolly wagon isekai show number 220 or something like that. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Still, don't let this rapper fool you into thinking this is actually an anime about slaying the Demon King. Oh no. This is Pokemon with lollies. No. Shokugeki no lolly. No. Kono lo No. Lolly arts on lo What the fuck is this show? What the fuck is this? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is fuck? Pop Team Epic is a show about two characters who don't have anything better to do with their lives than do outdated parodies that fan artists and amateur animators have been doing for the past few years. I mean, really, you could have just stolen a bunch of those instead of actually paying people to make better versions of them as you already did. <laughs> oh, wait. That's what those Bob Team Epic segments are for, huh? Half joking that isn't really joking, but somewhat kind of is joking aside, this anime is a ride. Yep. Sure was a ride. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. There's a cooking show set in the Fate universe. As if this series needed any more. No, no, no. You know what? I'm not going for the low-hanging jokes anymore. This show is just boring. It, it looks nice and stuff, but I just don't, uh, I don't, hmm, wait. Damn, that's pretty cute, huh? Well, all right, never mind. I just, I'll go, get, what? No. Mm. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the walk through my sleep-deprived and overworked brain sorting through why on earth I still watch anime at the pace I do and do all my editing on the last day because I don't understand how to do anything but procrastinate and hate my future self. Oh god, why? This season looks like a lot of fun and with some great shows continuing strong like Ancient Magus Bride, which you can find a video I made of up in that little card up in the top right. I'm sure I'll have way too much anime to fit in my tiny schedule. And so like it. But yeah, you can find me in the usual places. Twitter, here on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment, share with all your friends, and together we'll all hold hands and chant. I hope you always remember to enjoy the way you watch anime. Because as long as you're having fun, that's really all that matters. <laughs>